cloud recording to serve. There we go, recording in progress. And we're live on Facebook as well. Guys, just ask your questions if you're watching this on Facebook and we will come back. I'll come back and we'll, Alex will come back as well and we'll answer the questions there. But it gives me an enormous pleasure to introduce you to a friend of mine who's in Colorado. And I met Alex online actually. So it's like we've been a pen pal. So we've been writing back and forward over the years and commenting on each other's posts. And when I met Alex, I think it may have, might have been 2016 or 17. Yeah, and, like, uh, yeah, about five yeah. years ago. Yeah. We talked about, uh, we were actually, it was a business chat. We were talking about things to do with a business and she's really, really driven. She's very, very qualified. Um, I know her because I think we were in a personal training group with Czech practitioners, which is yep. really in-depth knowledge to do with food and hormones and assessments of the body and that kind of stuff. Anyway, we were talking and um, I said, you know, like people, great coaches really would benefit from doing seminars and workshops that helps build community, helps build your authority around the topic as well. And so she ran with that idea just after a conversation and just did it. And I watched her over the years implement it. And I thought, wow, she's a, a go-getter and a doer and a very extremely high achiever and an athlete and all of those things that so many of us right now uh, have been in the past, potentially, maybe we are. But the reason I really wanted to bring you guys this conversation is that as fluffy as it sounds, I want you to know that there is hope. I know 2020 has wiped a lot of people out. It's wiped a lot of us out emotionally, spiritually, financially, et cetera. And it did those things to Alex. I was talking to her on a phone call just the other day and just listening to her story now of how she has lost, lost her business um, through the pandemic and then also has rebuilt it and herself as something totally new, totally different, and how that came from taking radical responsibility for everything that happened, even though it's obviously not technically her fault. We are just living in these times. And I wanted to bring her story to you because it is definitely not only one of hope, but one of, I guess, radical responsibility and true surrender and trust. And we also need that right now. So without further ado, I'd love Alex to give us a bit of a background on herself and her story of what's happened in 2020. And I'll just randomly ask questions as we go. Awesome. Thank you, Kate, for the wonderful introduction. It has been awesome to follow your evolution as well online and on social media. So I think maybe most of your audience is in Australia. I don't know. I hear an accent from you and you guys hear an accent from me. So, you know, I don't want you to get curious and be thinking about where is this accent from? I'm originally from Brazil and I've been living in the United States, Boulder, Colorado for like 20 years now. And I've been in the United States for over 25 years and the accent is still here and always will be here. So I started my career as a personal trainer back in Brazil when personal training was just arriving in Brazil. I was one of the first female trainers to become like a strength coach, a sports specific trainer. And then as I, transition to United States. I had to learn English first. And then after I learned English about a couple of years, I was able to get back into training and um, had a pretty successful career as a personal trainer. And then I got to a point that just teaching people exercise and nutrition, I realized that it wasn't causing or helping people to transform enough to have the levels of transformation that I would like to see. So I started exploring um, other career paths and I bump into Paul Czech at the Czech Institute where it's basically he has an incredible program called Holistic Lifestyle Coaching that you can think as a, as a marriage between health coaching and life coaching. And a lot of us choose different modalities into the holistic lifestyle coaching, you know, um, career path. And I've been in this path now for almost 10 years. And um, the path I am now is way more direct towards spiritual teaching and emotional healing because, and I'll tell you guys a little bit why is spiritual teaching and emotional healing. I became pretty obsessed a few years ago about stress, the physiology 
in the psychology of stress, why some people thrive in stress and why other people just break down, collapse in stress. And of course, stress is a very broad subject. We have emotional stress, physical, mental, spiritual, and many others. So as I started studying stress more and more, I became very interested in, of course, the science of our thoughts, our mindset, our emotional state, and even our spiritual state. And um, to make this long story short, last year, through this um, crazy pandemic, um, a lot of us, we can say, lost our jobs, right? So I own my own business and I can say I lost my job. I, I needed to close the studio because the overhead was too high and people didn't want to come in. I couldn't find a trainer that want to work full time there and build a clientele in the middle of the pandemic, of course. So the studio just wasn't generating enough money and it became a big source of stress. So I decided to close the doors. Last February, I had to wait for my lease to be up and I got some assistance from the government. So it was a lot of struggle to even maintain the doors open and fulfill my obligations. And um, and few clients stopped training, few clients stopped working with me for obvious reasons, fear, fear of money, fear of what was happening and a lot of them couldn't handle um, doing the deep work. So I can say the business um, collapsed. The business model, I used to say my business tanked, collapsed. And then I shift my language more to like, no, because I am the business, right? I am the coach. I am the heart. I am the soul of the business. So I start shifting my mindset to like, the business hasn't collapsed because I'm here standing strong. The business model collapsed. And the business model was good, was sound. And at the same time, I think it was missing a lot of things. As a business owner, I became very driven uh, towards money, more driven towards achievement. How many clients can I get in a month, right? So that was the part of owning a business that I actually didn't like. Like I didn't like a part of myself owning a business. So it was a blessing that it collapsed because allow me to take a long pause. And it wasn't just the business that collapsed last year for me. It was the business, loss of clients, loss of money, closing the studio, loss of a relationship, loss of a lifestyle that we all build when we are in a relationship, a certain type of lifestyle that when you, you know, break up with somebody, you lose the lifestyle a lot of times as well. Um, and it was a time that I started questioning a lot of my own beliefs around what I was teaching, beliefs about how I was running my mindset and my emotional state. And when everything collapsed like that, you can, you know, you have two options. You can panic and blame the world for your breakdown. And you can panic, you can fall into depression, you can suffer from anxiety. And believe me, I tasted all of those states, anxiety, depression, despair, <laughs> feeling mm -hmm. defeated. So it's not like it's rainbow and roses. And because of what I know in terms of mindset and emotional healing and spiritual fitness, I was, I was in a point that I really needed to take everything that I was teaching to others and I had to turn those teachings towards myself like never before like it was easy for me to tell others or ask my own clients who are you without your business who are you without the money who are you without the guarantee who are you without the relationship who are you without the titles and there I was in that place asking those questions to myself. So it was a lot of like um, ego struggles and um, it was it was dark because when you start stripping out all those beliefs or the identities, you are really left alone, like left alone in the room and you start asking yourself, who am I? And that's, I think, one of the most important questions in our transformation process. When we ask that question, I think it, a portal opens 
mm. for major transformation, transcendence, and we face our own fears. And that moment of that question comes, we have a choice. Am I going to walk through this portal or I'm going to hold myself small and stay in this 3D material driven world? And for me, it was no brainer. My answer was like, I am entering, going to this portal with body and soul and see what happens. And that has been the journey. <laughs> and yet, folks, she's still here in physical form. Because I do want to ask you about um, the 3D versus the 5D. I haven't delved into that. That's why I wrote on the, I'm interviewing Alex and I'm looking forward to learning that. Because honestly, I interview people I want to learn from as well. You mentioned that there was a series of beliefs that you came into question probably everything to be honest but what in your experience what were your beliefs that then came into question because I think that that's probably one of well everybody can identify with that as a turning point yeah what great question beliefs? well as a high achiever and somebody who was teaching a lot of workshops at the workforce about productivity um, time management, right? How to be a top performer. So I was very embedded in the high performance world. So of course I study with the high performance gurus. I read all the books about success, time management, how to be productive, how to get more done. So it, when you are deep into the personal growth field, and I learned so many great things, I'm not here to say, Oh, be careful what you, you learn on personal growth field. It's a beautiful place to go, especially for people who are starting a journey of change. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there is a belief in, the, in a lot of these teachings and a lot of these books about personal growth and success that I believe is very 3D because it's very egoic. And the belief is this, that I used to have myself, that we are the creator. We are in charge and you work hard, you hustle, you take all the actions, you have determination, you have drive, you have persistence, and you will get the results you want. <laughs> no. The entire model for the last no. century. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm not here to say that that formula does not work. I cannot say that. You might still work for a lot of people. And through my own deep meditations and my spiritual growth, I have realized that that is more like a old world type of philosophy that work really well. And I'm wondering in this new dimension that we're entering now, that is really requesting us to operate from more a spiritual level or a 5D level, I think that model eventually will collapse for a lot of people, like collapse for myself, that believe that I'm in charge of all, because this is what happens. With that belief that you're in control and you are always in charge of everything and you, you are driven, energized person like I am, and you take all the actions every day, and yet you don't see the results, it's dark what happens as a consequence of that when you're not getting the results. You start asking the wrong question, which is, what's wrong with me? Yes. Why others are achieving success with this formula, and I'm doing everything according to you know, the books and the teachings, and yet, I don't get the results. I don't get the clients. I don't get the money. I don't get enough, you know, likes on my posts. I don't get enough likes on my YouTube videos. And we do something that is truly the thief of joy, the thief of confidence, which is comparison. We can't help but start comparing ourselves like, why is working for them and not for me? Mm. It's not just children or, you know, young people doing that on Facebook. I was doing that myself. I'm 50 years old. So, you know, I was doing that until a year, a year ago, still comparing myself. So that was a major belief that broke down for me, that we are not in control of everything and we're not in charge of everything. We are participators in the process and we are co-creators. And there's a force much bigger than us that you might call 
universe, you might call life, you might call God, you might call Buddha, you might call angels, you might call the field, and we can't deny the field if we're really going to, you know, not debate that quantum, the quantum field is real. Quantum physics is here to teach us that the field is real. So there's so much of this invisible field around us that it's working with us. It's never working against us. It's always working with us. And when we take that stand that is very egoic, that I am in total control, it's almost like we're telling the field, I don't need your help. I don't need your, your creation, which is the most powerful creation of all. So you don't need to be a religious person. You don't even need to be a spiritual person to believe what I'm saying right now. What I hope with this conversation that even somebody has a hard time connecting with spirituality in the quantum field is that you start simply asking questions or becoming curious about what happens when you start letting go control a little bit and getting very clear with your intention in you have the humility and the courage to look at areas in your life that are not working, even though you put in the effort. Could be as simple as like, let's say you tr you work on your weight loss right now and you're eating right and you're exercising every day, you're meeting the personal trainer in the gym and you're doing that for six months and still getting no results. That's very frustrating, isn't it? I'm sure this resonates with some of you. And and then more in that area, for example, just pause and ask yourself, what is not congruent here? What 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 is maybe some of your unconscious beliefs that are not in alignment with your conscious beliefs? You know, and that can be an entire conversation. But the, a lot of what I do and teach my clients, and I do it myself every single day, is creating congruence between your conscious beliefs and your unconscious beliefs. Now. That gets a little more complex because a lot of times we don't even know that we have some unconscious beliefs that are actually sabotaging or, or, um, or goals in our vision. So that's why for me, this journey was about taking a long pause and doing a lot of healing, healing inner child wounds, healing, um, healing some even trauma from heartbreaks with partners that I maybe hadn't dealt with. We tried to bypass. It's high achievers love to bypass. High achievers love to use positive psychology. We are masters in using positive psychology to bypass the pain. So I allow for the last eight months, nine months, I allow all those emotions to emerge because I had time. I wasn't working much. I had time. And there are a lot of dark nights of the soul moments and healing my own wounds, letting go of some of my limiting beliefs, led me to where I am right now, where organically the business is growing, clients are coming, and it's not from hard work. It's, it's, a, it's from a lot of deep work and everything is shifting. So because we change here, or external life changes. It's not the opposite. And as high achievers, we love to try to make the changes being external. We love to manipulate our environment all the time. What can I do? How can I write this newsletter? How can I create some scarcity mindset? So you ask me about what beliefs I have changed. The second belief I changed is this message that is giving to a lot of trainers and coaches that we need to create a scarcity messages so clients come and sign up with us so just to clarify you mean for example when you're running a business sometimes because <laughs> i've done all the marketing courses as well now we're taught um which i hate oh there's hurry up there's only two places left yeah and if you don't do this now then something bad's going to happen basically exactly yeah. and maybe it's true that if it's true and authentic that you only have two spots open then yes, hey, I truly just have two spots open, so take advantage. But to use that strategy to get clients, to create that fear in clients, it's very, again, 3D. So when I start thinking about, are my messages creating hope, creating curiosity, 
or my messages are creating fear. And a lot of my messages were creating fear. So that was the second major uh, belief change. It's like, I'm not going to use this sales strategies to get people to sign up with me. Because number one, they're not, they were not working. <laughs> they're not yours, really, were they? I mean, you all of a sudden felt That's right. disconnected because you might be learning other things from other people to implement which I don't it's, think is bad. I find that I've taken bits from certain pieces or that whatever works only exactly like you to turn my back on most of it and go, no, oh, that doesn't feel any good. I'm just going to do it this way. Yeah. What was the next? Um, so the number, yeah. So scarcity, the number two. Um, the number three, it's, um, it's, a big, it's, it's a big one. The number three, it's about... the belief that I will have more, way more impact in my clients. They sit here in my office, there's a chair here and that's where they sit and I work with them or on Zoom. I used to believe more that it's about talking, educating and you know, sometimes even give that tough love and believe me, all those things still happen. And what I have learned is that there's a higher impact when I hold this space of a lot of love and compassion for my clients. So a lot of times instead of just talking a lot and keep pushing my clients to make certain changes, which is easy to do when we come from the personal training world. And I was pretty tough on my clients as a trainer. There's, you know, and, and you get results and you start getting the reputation, you are badass. And we start like, oh, it's cool. I am a badass, yeah. And I had to really watch because I was kind of bringing the attitude with some of my clients to some emotional healing and some, you know, helping my clients to do with some painful stuff. And they are already in a state, a lot of my clients are already in a state of survival. They are already in a place that they don't feel safe. They're in a place that they are in fear. So a lot of times instead of talking a lot, I would still talk, but I would talk much less. I'll talk much softer. And meanwhile, I'm sitting in my chair holding a space of energy, uh, uh, of love. What I mean by that is that the energy that I'm holding in my own body, a lot of times will have a deeper impact in my client's progress in the session than a lot of this. Mm-hmm. So that was, you know, to summarize another belief that I really changed. I start really questioning a lot of the my teachings and I really understood that concept of we need to unlearn to really become a very powerful, impactful coach. We need to a lot of times unlearn everything we learned and that's scare itself. Mm-hmm. Unlearn then we can kind of really show up in more in our own experience, our own energy. So I'm not just repeating somebody else's script. And we need to do that. When if you're starting a career as a coach, we do that. And then ultimately, the evolution of a coach, a therapist, a counselor, a trainer is to start integrating everything that you have learned from your personal experiences to your professional learnings. You start integrating and all of a sudden you're developing your own style of teaching or healing or transformation. And that's what has been happening in my, in my work in the last few months. And sometimes it's just like, I'm like, I ask myself, wow, what was that? Because I allow my intuition to lead more than my head. So that's the third one. Oh, wow. Um, I'm sure everybody's getting a lot from this. Actually, that's not even a coach, to be honest. It's beneficial for everybody, I think. And I think a lot of things are... I don't, I'm biased, obviously, towards people that work for themselves and I'm doing this interview series with majority people who work with themselves and being interviewed by other people that work with themselves as well. Um, I think you pointed out in the first point, one of the most powerful things that you were doing in comparison, and I think we all do this as well, is asking a question because we can ask whatever questions we really want the answers to as well. 
And I'm not saying to avoid the pain, but maybe I, maybe my ego is saying that. I don't know. Tell me. But one of the questions you asked that you'd been asking yourself, which we all ask, what's wrong with me? Do you really want the answer to that? And I'm only saying that just to, I think, more get people to think about what are the questions that you're asking? Because if you really want to have some power and guidance and control, for want of a better word, as you move forwards, it could be just coming from the questions that you ask, I found. Don't you find? Because if you don't want the answer to a question, then don't ask questions that lead you down a trail of be, being a victim because this is happening for you, not to you. Yes. Even though and that, it looks like it's happening to you, it is for you. That itself is a journey. So, you know, you obviously, because of the way our brain works, every question that you ask yourself, you will get the answer. Your unconscious or your conscious mind will give you an answer. So if you keep asking what's wrong with me or why what I'm doing is not working, you know, there's this what I call disempowering questions, you will get the answer. And I would say there's no such a thing like, I would say wrong question because by asking that what's wrong with me, led me to work with an incredible spiritual teacher, therapist, who helped me tremendously with inner child healing. So I needed to ask the question because I, I needed to learn about some unprocessed pain, old wounds that I was still holding in my body. And again, as high achievers, we love to say, oh, I'm, I'm done with that. I already healed that. My, you know, mom, mommy and daddy issues, I'm already done. We love doing that. Be aware. I'm just saying, because a lot of times you might think the ego mind will say, you're done with that. Move on. Your body never lies. The way you feel never lies. Your energy never lies. So, Maybe your brain thinks you resolved. Your body is saying, mm, not yet. So by asking that question, what's wrong with me, led me to work for two years with a wonderful teacher that helped me to free my inner child. And she taught me so well that I kept doing the work myself. Um, for the last six months, I have, the last six months I kind of been doing, I continued the inner child healing myself. So that question led me to that path of healing, which led me to where I am right now, which is, of course, helping my clients with their inner child healing process and led me to be in a place right now where I'm going to study with Dr. Gabor Mate, which is all about healing trauma and childhood trauma. So all of a sudden, I'm, I'm in this new path and I wouldn't be in this new exciting path if I hadn't gone through all this pain myself. So the question what's wrong with me, I'm not encouraging to keep to ask that question. Just be curious. If you are asking that question to yourself, then where do you want to go with that question? Like the only thing I discourage you to do to, or I say, do not do this, is to keep asking that question and just sit in a chair alone with that question and ruminate in those answers. No, if you ask in these questions, there are disempowering. Do the work. That question is inviting you to do deeper healing work. Mm. Not just jump from that, that, that question to a positive question without doing the work because that's a form of bypassing. If you just read the positive psychology books or personal growth books, they're going to say, think positive, claim positive affirmations every day. If you do that, you go from like, what's wrong with me to nothing is wrong with me. I am amazing. I am beautiful. I am perfect. Will that heal your past wounds? <laughs> Just by saying those, those affirmations. You won't because those affirmations are coming from your brain. And trauma unresolved emotions get healed in the body. So you can say positive affirmations 12 hours a day. It's not gonna work. You're gonna think you're doing the work, but it's not help, it's, it's a start. And 
it's not complete. There's way more. Is there anything that you feel comfortable as far as your own sh your own story or your own journey that you feel comfortable sharing with us? Any thoughts uh, of that? Or any questions that you asked, even if it's not around childhood trauma? Um, well, let's, let's address this for a second. I would, I would feel disclosed, you know, full disclosed um, about childhood trauma. So let's clarify this, this word trauma, because I think the word trauma, it's very misunderstood by a lot of people. And the reason I'm talking about this is because we're talking about my journey, how I got here. Mm. And my business is starting to flourish because of my inner work, not because of my outer work, not because I'm doing more YouTube videos, not because I'm doing more Facebook posts. So that's that's how I'm connecting this, okay? So when I use the word trauma here, you know, the teacher that helped me to define this, of course, is Dr. Gabor Mate. You can look him up. He does a lot of work around trauma. Is that trauma is any time we experience, and a lot of our trauma it starts in childhood and it you know, can happen through our, our whole life, but let's talk about our first phase of imprinting of trauma from zero to seven. Trauma is simply any time as a child we experience a situation or event that we feel confusion and chaos in the body and we don't know how to process that as a baby, as a toddler, as a child. Or you experience a trauma alone, meaning it's very different if you experience something and there's somebody there to support you, like an adult with empathy and compassion to support you in that trauma versus when you're going through something and there's nobody there. That is a very different print of child. So when I say trauma, it's any difficult, what you call negative experience that you had as a child. A lot of times we don't remember. Or we remember more like when I was nine, my parents got divorced and my father wasn't very nice. He was very angry that my mother left him. And he, you know, spent time with me and threat my mother to hurt my mother, but he wouldn't say to her. He would say to a nine-year-old. So I started learning a lot of fear and of course, we can go back because we can learn fear just by watching the stress of our own parents. Accelerate, so for me it was being an entrepreneur when I started my own business 2015 that I left the, the, the gym and I decided I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, a sole entrepreneur, I'm gonna be very successful, I'm gonna make a ton of money, that whole story. I was compensating for a lot of my insecurities so behind all the, the muscles and the toughness, I was hiding a lot of insecurities, a lot of feelings of I'm not successful enough or I don't know how to be successful. So I was hiding a lot of those fears, a lot of those insecurities, a lot of self-doubt and compensating with a lot of external actions. So I think that's, that's like, you know, as much as I can share here um, that it's, um, that is relevant for this conversation. It's so relevant to everybody, actually, yeah. Alex, because everybody is being stripped of their external circumstances, yep. which they have probably had a lot of control over up until now. So even if we're not in more of a spiritual world and we're just doing to achieve and controlling quite a lot through goal, whatever we're manifesting, all of a sudden when that's not there, like you said, then comes the question, oh, but who am I and who are we? I think we get to create ourselves on an ongoing regular basis, you know, daily, don't we, if we get to choose. So what would be some, what are some of the things that you've done to work through the thing as in have you got a series of questions that you ask yourself and obviously you have to feel things when things come up. Is there anything that without obviously going in depth into 12 weeks or 12 months worth of work on a call because it just can't be done? I um, feel like they happened pretty fast. I feel like everything was accelerated. I was in this turbo healing. And we all can say that we feel like time is a little warped right now. Things, I don't know if you feel this way, a lot of you but feels like everything's happening fast. The frequency of the planet is very high. So it's, 
it feels that way. It's my it's my own perception, and I know a lot of people are experiencing this as well. But what I can say, you know, if I can summarize what the things I did to to get to this place where I am today, still learning, still healing. I had the last two days were very intense. Things are really getting hot here because of the pandemic, you know, the V versus no V, you know, mask, no mask. And there's all the, the, the energy in the collective is very palpable. And on top of that, we have a lot of fires in the West right now. And where I am, we're getting a lot of the smoke. So we're getting all the emotional tension of the collective plus the smoke, making the air quality super poor. So the last two days, I had hard time. So it's not like when I say, oh, this led me to this place I am, it's all rainbow roses. It is not. The difference is when we do the work, we just become more resilient, more spiritually resilient. We learn how to not look at things and get attached to things so close. We learn how to look at things from a different angle, like eagle's eyes. Or being an observer. I was reading the other observer. day and I thought I've never heard it put like that. We learn all of a sudden to be an observer sometimes in harder times. Yes. So that's the first, if I'm going to give you a to do, it's like become an observer. And then the hard part, learn how to be more, versus do more and this is a very hard lesson for high achievers especially as you see your bank account going down you see your clients leaving you it's autumn it's natural for us to go into survival and go into i need to do more let me tell you (laughs) and that this has everything to do with letting go control and surrendering I learned that a lot of times when I was in fear because I was running out of money, when I had like $200 in my bank account, I learned in this last few months that instead of doing more, I actually would meditate. I would look at my bank statement. I'm like, oh my God, that fear, right? That fear, how am I going to pay my, my mortgage? How am I going to pay my bills? And I learned how to like, okay, I know that doing more, it's not going to solve this problem. So I was sitting in meditation for a whole hour and open myself, do a lot of breath work, become very present with the body. And I will literally ask guidance to my higher self. So again, if you're not, you know, consider yourself a spiritual person and you say, ah, there's nobody out there. Well, you are there and you have your higher self, which is this very intelligent side of you that is the observer that is the creative mind, that is the intuitive mind, is the insightful mind. So you can simply ask guidance to your higher self. And the key is to sit and listen and to quiet the mind enough to listen because your intuition will start speaking to you. And all of a sudden in that meditation, you will hear some kind of insight, a hunch. You're going to feel something. And then from that place, you take what I call guided action. So heart guided action. And guess what? When you take an action from that place that is pure love instead of fear, the quality of the action is completely different. So when you're taking actions, if I can give you a nugget here, when you take, if you're in a place of fear right now because you're running out of money, your business model is not working, whatever it is that, you know, you're struggling with fear, self-doubt, worry, overwhelm, anxiety. That's all under fear. Step back. Have the courage to step back and go into a meditation. And let your guidance come. Because, again, there's a huge difference between an action that has the energy of love versus the energy of fear. And that's key. And the only way to learn the difference between both, because if you're just operating from your conscious brain, your 5% conscious mind, you're not going to know the difference. So you need to sit back. You need to sit back. And if sitting in meditation for an hour sounds like, oh, my God, I could never do that, don't panic. Go take a walk for an hour. No phone, no podcasts, nothing. Go just take a walk for an hour 
and become present with your environment. Become present in the environment. Just like Eckhart Tolle says, the power of now, become present. Because your body needs to be relaxed in order for you to access this intelligence in you. If you're in fear and survival, you won't access this incredible intelligence that's in you and also in your field. So the first thing you need to do is to step out of fear because in fear, you're not creative. In fear, you are in survival. Think about it. Survival for your brain means you're running away from a tiger. Are you creative if you're running away from a tiger? Are you insightful? Are you intuitive? No. You in fight or flight response. And biologically speaking, in that fight or flight response, the survival brain, your intelligence, your creativity, your intuition, they basically disappear. So you, 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 you get stuck in survival. And that's not where your brilliance is going to come from because you all have a tremendous genius in you. We, you all have that. And this is a time that a lot of this gene is not going to come from books. It's not going to come from an external teacher. It's not going to come from another continuing education course, from another $10,000, you know, program that you're going to do. Those are important. And you're going to be surprised what you start learning when you allow the teacher within you combined with the teachers out here to work and help and support you. So that's when you start bringing some very empowering questions, like what am I capable of creating? Oh, how, how can I support my clients best? How can I support our planet right now? How can I support humanity more right now? When you start asking that, how can I support our planet more? Just be saying that, I have goosebump in my legs. You shift your energy because you go into pure service and that's love. So you go into pure service and that's love versus, oh my God, how am I gonna make money for next month? That is nothing. My body instantly sinks. So you start doing this and you literally feel the difference in your energetic field. Your body tells you when you say something that is empowering versus something that is empowering. Your body feels completely different. What can I do to serve humanity? I instantly, I lift my body. Oh my God, how am I gonna pay my mortgage next month? My body instantly sinks into my chair. That's the difference, fear versus love. That's a really good definition, my well, like. <laughs> And you know, I've got goosebumps from you saying it as well, actually. I want to do it for a second. Get support. Get, get a guide. Get somebody. If, if this language, it, it doesn't resonate. I mean, if it resonates in a way like, yes, I want to be able to, to do that, to be more and do less. And you like, you're going to like, but how do I do that? Well, that's why I'm here to support anybody who wants to learn this work. And you might have other guides, other teachers, other mentors around you that might be able to teach you how to do that too. And that's why inner healing is very important. If you have a lot of baggage from the past, that baggage can create tremendous blocks in accessing or brilliance. That's why doing the deep work and letting go of the past, it's so important because it frees us. It creates room for the joy, for the love, for the freedom, for the bliss. So I will stop here and let you ask questions. <laughs> no, there's definitely no need to stop. Um, I'm sure that you would actually, do you have anything? Like I love giving away, actually I, I've often always turns out come from a place of service. That's why randomly clients show up. When I put the two together, I'm like, oh, Turns out, oh, look, I'm reading that over there. Other people are teaching that as a marketing tactic. Well, you need a customer service care list to actually care about people. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> Whereas I find a lot of female coaches will just, you know, think of Betty in the shower and call and see how they are. And just like, that's my MO is just to be constantly giving. I always find it interesting when people feel drained from constantly giving. Anyway, I'm sure there's, 
there's an individual equation with all of this stuff for all of us. And, you know, because everybody's at a different level, everyone's can implement things, can let go of things, can forgive things at different rates, which is all perfect and how it's supposed to be, right? Are there any free guides that you have <laughs> apart from these guides? And I'm waving my hand in the air if you were listening to the audio. Are there any, is there a download or where, where can people find you so that they can access any of your material? Obviously, I'll put all of your links near this recording as well. Yes. So a lot of my uh, content is on my YouTube channel. And you can share the link. It's on under Alex Gill Coaching. Oh, so there's so there, and it's G I L one L guys. G I L one L. Alex A L E X G I L last name. Alex Alex Gill Coaching. That's also the same on my Instagram where I put content almost every day. I post quotes and sometimes short videos on my Instagram. But my my YouTube channel is the best way to to get more of my teachings, my um, my content. And um, my website is outdated. <laughs> um, so I do not have any free gifts, free downloads to teach you this work. Not yet. Um, my work has been, again, a lot of like healing and creating a lot of spontaneous, like easy making videos. That's free. That's content. That's free. You can go watch that. The website and doing like, you know, um, online courses. That is in the agenda for the next few months for sure. Yeah. But YouTube channel, you can get a lot of this, um, this content, my teachings, my coachings. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And it's so needed. Um, is there anything else that you want to share? I just felt guided then to ask, what do you see? For the future what would you like to be creating for the future oh wow technically <laughs> and so i know it's a big one yes we have another hour if you'd like to keep going it's a big <laughs> one. i have a big life's mission and of course it's a mission that i'm just kind of following the footsteps of all the great spiritual teachers all the great therapists and um i really want for us, each one of us, to let go our traumas, to really heal our bodies, our hearts, so we can pave the way for this generation, for the children coming, for the future generations, because I feel like we, we, being, we are by a product of so much generational trauma that's been passing along for so many years since our existence. Mm. And in the only way we're gonna stop passing this 3D models and limiting beliefs and this trauma is by healing ourselves individually. Because again, we, we're we not gonna see the changes we wanna see in the world, like more peace, more joy, more health, more vitality, more energy, more community, more cooperation. We will not see those changes unless we start healing individually. I cannot expect to see more peace in the world if I'm not in peace right here between my, my head and my heart, my body. So the message I'll give to everybody is the most self, the most loving thing you can do for the ones you love, for the planet, for humanity, is to heal yourself. It's the most loving thing you can do right now. And I know this is a big movement right now because things are crazy. A lot of spiritual teachers, more advanced teachers are saying that this is our great awakening opportunity. We either gonna awake or we're going to go extinct. So we are in this like, in this, you know, kind of the forked road here. We have a choice to make. And of course, I'm choosing for the Great Awakening because we have so much potential as an individual. And therefore, as a collective, we can do so much better. And in order to do that, we heal ourselves and then we start working with others. Because when you heal yourself, you give permission to somebody else to heal. 
and then that person is going to give permission to somebody else to heal. So we create massive change, like the ripples on the lake when you toss a rock. So when you heal yourself, you create this ripple effect around you and you start aligning yourself with other people who are also doing this work. And that's what the power is. So this is work for the brave, for the courageous. So being vulnerable, work with somebody seeking help and support is not weakness. It's strength. It's courage. So heal so you can operate every day from your genius, from your brilliance. That's the message that I like to leave to everybody. Amazing. I think people get to be more amazing just like that if they could tune into what it is that they, what are they here to do? What, why, why? I yeah. don't get that people have never asked that. I get that there's probably maybe only a small percentage of us that have ever asked that. I think that generally people that work for themselves are probably asking that. And I love this time. Do you know why I love this time as hard as it is for everybody, as devastating as it is to know, actually know people that have, kill themselves mm -hmm. now is that we're all going through the same thing together and we were obviously put here at this yep. time for a reason what well, we yep. chose to come here at this time whatever you believe it doesn't really matter you yep. can't get out of it <laughs> so becoming the best version of yourself like you said is not selfish no nope. um, it's, it's incredibly powerful in my opinion becoming the best version of yourself right now by healing your wounds, transforming, it's a necessity. It's a, it's a choice that we can all make. And, and I think that's how we're going to get to the other side of this craziness and chaotic and a lot of times scary place. Thank you so much for your time today, Alex. Alex, also, what's your email address if people want to send you an email and ask you a question? Sure. Anybody can um, send me an email and we can always, I'm going to, I want to give a 20 minutes um, call to anybody who want to learn more and ask me some specific questions. Um, all you need to do is to email me and I will do a 20 minute zoom call so I can support your community uh, free. My email is Alex, A-L-E-X at Vitali, V I T A. -E studio.com alex at vitale studio.com because that's still the my website so um that's the best way to um get in touch with me amazing instagram or facebook perfect there's yes there's so much free stuff but it's i mean it's better if people limit their consumption probably now isn't it stay in your own bubble you do not need to go on social media to get in touch with me email it's the easiest way and i love that ironically you know the more you change your vibe oh the clients come from everywhere it wasn't because you're running a facebook ad it wasn't because you sent a sit an email series it wasn't because i have a ten thousand dollar website no in fact definitely not right i don't <laughs> That's the other lesson is like there was there was no money to rebrand to create anything external. And that will probably be my nature had I had a you know a big amount of money. So there was a gift there of not having the financial resources because I needed to really rely on my own my own inner work. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Thank I you so it. much, Kate, for doing this. And thanks, everybody. I hope this was um, useful and it served you. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to hear back from any of you. It will be. It's very eye-opening, actually. And it's always important to hear these things in a, in a different way, in a very personal way. And I don't think that, to be honest, until you've done the work on yourself, how do you possibly understand to teach how to teach a concept that's why you word it so beautifully honestly it's not because you're a writer or maybe you are it's because of living it so thank you for sharing your, thank you. your thank journey you. and your wisdom today as well everybody knows where we are if you've got any questions or otherwise this will be on all of my channels as well or the website which is katemartinmentor.com 
and or kate at katemartinmentor.com if you've got a question feel free to ask it's time that we go and create create the new and i'll let you guys get on with your day thank you so much again for your time thank you